Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and I have no idea what I'm going to call this show. This um, I just came out of prayer this morning on Monday, October 31st, 2022, and I just really felt like I needed to pass this on to y'all. So late last night, I did the, the first prophetic word review show, and this one was on the power of prayer. And I was really, really surprised by how much of it got into my spirit and how interesting it was to do that show. Uh, well, this morning, I just came out of prayer, and I was praying at length because of what the Lord had, had shown me in the spirit when I was doing that show about how powerful our, our prayers are. And um, I kind of got something I wanted to pass on to y'all, but also I realized I had printed out another word I did not read, and it, and it has to do with this, so I'm going to read it now. I apologize for my voice. Um, this one is from October 16th, 2018, and it's called The Enemy's Hand. Those called to prayer in this time have an especially important work to do. They are like highly trained bodyguards that provide cover for the workers assigned to other tasks. I saw in the spirit that some are assigned to prayer who are not praying, and this is happening on a wide scale. God has called a specific group to intense prayer and intercession. You have been assigned specific areas and people to pray over continually. Many are refusing to answer the call at all, but others are just not doing the work. The scene changed, and I saw them out playing on a playground. The Lord showed me this was the enemy's hand at work. Accidents and disasters will take place when those I have assigned refuse to do my will. I will hold you accountable. I gave you dominion over the world you live in, but you are not taking dominion. You neglect it as you run out to play. Because of this, many will not be where they are assigned to be when events come and shall be destroyed. The enemy is calling you out to play. I am calling you to work, but you are following the piper who calls playtime. Because you have attuned yourself to hear the enemy and not me, you will be in the wrong place. Because you have not kept your post, the covering I have assigned will be lacking, and many who should not be taken yet will be taken. I will hold you accountable for this. My body should work like a well old machine. But when my children disobey, this is not so. As more play, others are distracted and stop working. And I saw when one child is acting up in class, others stop working as well, and nobody gets any work done. My children, do you still not recognize the enemy's hand at work in your lives? Do you still not understand the value of the work I have called you to? A soldier must not leave his post as one soldier can allow an entire army to be breached. Watch and pray. And I made a note on there that I had also found myself being distracted in prayer time. The enemy only tries to distract us from work that is having an effect against him. Prayer devastates the kingdom of darkness. It devastates it. Satan greatly fears the prayers of God's anointed. That should tell us something, y'all. The Lord is trying desperately to tell us that our prayer time is of great value and that we have not put that value on it, that we have gone aside and done other things or gone out to play but, or done whatever but not spent time praying, and he wants us to pray more and pray more intensely. My mother was an intercessor. She was a strong intercessor, and <laughs> I did not know when I was younger that when she looked at you dead in the eye and she goes, I'm praying for you, that that meant something. You know, I didn't know <laughs> when I was a wayward child and— a young woman, um, and I was not saved, and I was just doing whatever I felt like doing. I didn't know the value of those words, or I would have been scared, okay? But I understand now. My mother knew God, and she spent time every day with God. She spent time every day in the Word. And by golly, if she said she was going to pray for you, you better know she was going to pray. Not only that, but God was going to hear, and God was going to answer. And I am a direct result of that, of her and my eldest sister's very intense prayers, for him to turn my life around, and he did. And when he got a hold of me, he got a hold of me. I mean, and I sold out because I saw then that he was the one living God, and I chased everything else, you know, and exhausted myself. So your prayers have great value. And my, my poor mom, she said, after, you know, she prayed for over 10 years for me. 
And she said, I almost gave up. And I said, I'm so glad you didn't. And she was so glad she didn't, too. Her roommate at the care home told me that that was all she talked about was that I was called to preach. She was so proud that she had a preacher among her children, and she had prayed. And she told me one day, she said, I wonder why none of the others became a preacher. And, she, and I said, well, how many did you pray for? And she said, one. And I said, well, God answered your prayer. He gave you one. I said, that's why. But uh, I was so far out in the world <laughs> that when I gave my life to Jesus, there were members of my family that accused me of just pretending to be saved to get my mother's favor. I cannot make this up, y'all. I cannot make this up. We should be so saved and so filled with the Spirit of God and so full of prayer that our whole family gets saved. Make it your goal today that you will not cease going before the throne of God like my mother did and daily beseeching and decreeing and declaring until your whole family is saved, along with every addict and lost person you know, along with praying for people you don't know. You know, I used to think that when... You know, meth is so prevalent prevalent now. It is just, it's everywhere. And it's so heartbreaking to see lives just devastated by that and the destruction it brings. And I used to think, because I'm a renter, I, I don't own my own home. I've never owned my own home. I used to think when one moved into the neighborhood, like, oh, no, there goes the neighborhood, right? Because, you know, the drug traffic and everything comes with them. And now, I told the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I'm really sorry I saw that that way. I said, because that's an opportunity, That is an opportunity right there for you to get glory. So now, if somebody that's addicted to drugs moves into my neighborhood, guess what? The enemy just brought somebody into my territory, God's territory. And guess what I'm going to do with that? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go before the throne every single day, every day. And I'm going to beseech God to save them and to turn that drug addiction on its heels into a mighty testimony to glorify my King, and I will not stop praying. So I just want to invite y'all to do the same thing. You know, we can look around at the world around us, and we can complain about what we see. We can complain about our neighborhoods and our cities and our states and our governments, or we can take the dominion God has given us, and we can stand up and go, no, that's not okay. And guess what? I don't know if I'll see the change in my lifetime, but I won't stop praying for the change in my lifetime. Thanks for listening. Jesus bless you. I hope y'all have a great day, and I hope you really take this to heart and set some prayer goals. Let's do this. Let's do this, and let's keep a prayer journal so we have testimonies out of it, too. We are here to glorify Him and do His will. Let's get to work.